Hoops is the raunchy foul, an extremely vulgar new animated show coming to Netflix this summer. I'm incredibly excited for it. Here to tell me more are Jake Johnson and Ben Hoffman. Hi, guys. Hey, Brian. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Um, so this is a show about a uh, basketball coach that is essentially coaching a, a, a terrible team. Uh, at, where, where, did, where did the show idea come from? How did this all come together? Ben? You want to start? Sure. Well, I um, the show was written not what what is it, Jake? Four or five years ago. So I will shorten Possibly that. Long. Yeah, I will. Sh I will. I will not tell the five year version. Things in Hollywood take a long <laughs> time. But I um always I grew up in Kentucky. Was always a big basketball fan, and I always wanted to write a show about a foul mouth angry person and for whatever reason especially coaches sport sports in general is some place where it's just kind of seen as like a, a a fair ground to just act like a maniac i mean those videos go viral all the time like it's almost like the crazier and more vulgar you are the more views you get i didn't do it for that reason but i was just like this is a good opportunity my love of basketball my love of comedy to merge the two and just let her rip you know and now jake you're the coach your coach band on the show yes. did you have coaches like this growing up i would say it's like teeters on abuse but uh like ben said this <laughs> It goes viral. <laughs> so, <laughs> like then, I grew up seeing these coaches. You know, the Bobby Knights of the world, and I grew up really in the '80s and '90s. And not only was this normal to see, but this was expected out of a coach. So, what I thought was really funny about the premise of this is we've got a guy who is vulgar and he is loud and he is in people's face, but he's also just a terrible coach. Because most of these guys, <laughs> the reason they keep their jobs is they win. So, I thought what was fun about this guy was. He's a terrible coach. He's in everybody's faces, and he coaches the worst team in the district. Um, and so it's really fun to do it. You know, it's I think it's a really loud show, but I think it's really funny, and it's meant to be ridiculous. And I think you know there's going to be a lot of laughs that come out of it. I hope. The uh, interesting thing about coaches in the '80s, and I, I grew up then too, um, it was impossible to film them back then. So you had no way of really tracking what they were doing until they got away with everything. And then recently, people have been able to turn the cameras on. Uh, so I think it's it's fascinating that you that you've essentially created these characters together who uh, are this replication of that era. Because that that's yeah, but mind you, it's also it's heightened in a ridiculous way because he's coaching kids. So yeah. I think what we've all learned is a lot of these coaches in real life are pieces, of <laughs> and we find out that they like strangled people, and they become very hateable. And what's yep. different about Coach Ben? He really does love these kids, and the kids really do love him, and he wants them to win. He's just, you know, he's a mad guy, and he's got a terrible squad, and nobody knows how to dribble or pays attention. The only reason the kids want to play is they like being part of a community, and Coach Ben sees himself as really talented and really has a chance to get to the pros and take over. The only problem is his are, you know, his players and his daddy issues. So there's a lot going on with Ben on it that it's fun to think of those guys, the real coaches, but the difference is, is Coach Ben's an animated character. So we can put <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's yeah, hard for I, him I, to, I, to warp the brain of a child permanently because he's not real. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah, I those, think, I think the animation are, thing that, Yeah, yeah I was going to say, gonna say too, that I was going to say, it's like, the old saying, it's not whether you win or lose, it's how you play the game. It's like fun to watch a coach who only cares about winning. He doesn't care about how he plays the game. It's just wins and losses and whatever he has to do to get there. And he has no skills to do it. Now, in, and everything, in terms of, everything is, is someone else's fault. Of course. <laughs> in in terms of writing the show, uh, Jake, your, de your delivery feels uh, very stream of consciousness. Um, obviously, there's a script involved. There's a writer's room and all that. Um, how much wiggle room were you given in terms of ad-libbing? Uh, how much of your own sort of derangements were you able to dump into this character and the way he speaks and, and interacts? Yeah, well, we had, you know, we had a great writer's room. So we had a bunch of people who would really craft the stories and we would kind of lock in. But this really started with Ben and I in a booth together. We made a pilot presentation of this probably nine years ago, eight years ago. 
where the idea of it was let's just get as crazy as we can and let MTV pass on us, which is what they did. <laughs> so all the records, we would always say the lines, and if the scripted line was the best line, then that's what would stay in. But it really just felt like we were trying to be as ridiculous and make each other laugh and then, you know, see what works. So there was improv, not just with me, but with all the everybody in it. You know, Cleo King, who plays the principal, she was written as funny, but when Cleo came in and started improvising, the character came to life. And Rob Riggle the same way. And everybody, really. You know, Natasha Lajara. So we were all allowed to improvise and goof around, and, you know, it helped. And 80 Miles, who's a writer himself, played Maddie, was so funny. Ron Funches, everybody. This is a show that is uh, – the, the coach specifically is rife with um, just bizarre and incredibly deranged and very creative insults. Um, in this in the section I saw, there's an entire part about uh, a hamster going into uh, a ref. Um, and so, what what were some what are what are some of your sort of favorite insults that you've either uh, been told, overheard, uh, or have said yourself uh, in the long process that is life? I, I've got one because uh, I'm the same way. When I, when I was growing up, insults were a weird form of affection and endearment and that, you know, when <laughs> uncle would get you an uncle, you would feel good about yourself. But yep. when I got on New Girl, the network told me I was too fat for television and I needed to lose some weight. And I was really sad about it because I love to eat so much. And my friend, Steve Berg, who plays DJ in the show, the little chubby kid, uh, my buddy Steve <laughs> nicknamed me Pizza Johnson. And every day would just <laughs> photos of pizza because he knew I wanted to eat it. So every time I would get the phone with bleep, I would look and it would be a delicious pizza. And he'd say, hey, pizza, Johnson, you don't have pizza. <laughs> and I got to tell you, it hurt every time. That sucked. Funny. That's so cruel. Because it's also like, it's not, it's making fun of something that you have control of, but you could lose control of at any second just looking at a single photo. <laughs> That's, exactly right. That's right. Well, Ben and Jake, thank you guys so much. Uh, all 10 episodes of Hoops comes to Netflix on August 21st. Uh, so watch it then. You're home. Re you're relaxing. Uh, and it's uncensored. I promise you that. The version I got is not. Uh, but you will be ahead of the curve. And you'll get the one with all all the words that you uh, don't want your children to hear. So don't let them hear it. It's, or do. It's, be also, a bad it's, also, it's also animated. So you don't have to look at Jake's dick nose. That's <laughs> <laughs> the uh... The, the little tag thing for hoops advertising. It's animated, so you don't have to look at Jake's dick nose. Thomas Thanks, guys. Thanks, buddy. Appreciate it, man. All right.